Welcome to ES310 Lesson 33. Today we will review some of the 3D kinematic problems by looking at a couple of more examples of these types of problems. More information about these topics can be found in Chapter 20 of Hibbler's Dynamics Text, Sections 1 through 3, or in Lesson 32 of this, of this class. By way of review, the 3D kinematic except to add the possibility that the omega variable acts in all three directions. This means that we can no longer assume that it is only in the k direction, and so in our acceleration we need to incorporate a term that deals with the change in magnitude of the angular velocity, as well as a term that change, deals with the change in direction of that angular velocity. So our general planar motion equations have a new term as the third term in the velocity equation instead of the omega squared r term. We looked last time at systems that had rotating coordinate systems because this is a common way of simplifying systems moving in 3D. Uh, in this case we have a general vector which we can take the time derivative of, of by looking at the time derivative of that vector with respect to a moving coordinate system and then adding the angular velocity of that moving coordinate system crossed with the original vector. The total angular velocity for these types of problems then is the angular velocity as measured from a moving coordinate system plus the angular velocity of that moving coordinate system. The total angular acceleration comes from applying the, the time derivative of a general vector to each of the components of the omega equation. In this case, then, we have, we have the time derivative of omega in the moving coordinate system plus the, time, plus the omega of the moving coordinate system crossed with the omega in the moving coordinate system plus the time derivative of the angular velocity of the moving coordinate system. Today we're going to look at a couple of examples that don't necessarily use the the rotating coordinate systems. Instead we're going to focus on the general planar equations. In this first example we have a situation where we have meshed gears. The bottom gear is stationary and the top gear is turning with, at a constant rate of omega. We are asked to find the angular velocity of gear A around, an arbitra around the stationary point O. In order to do this, we're going to identify several points of which we know something about the velocity. So in our case, the two points we're going to look at are this point up here, which I'm going to call P, and this point down here, which I'm going to call R. Notice that R is an instantaneous center of zero velocity since the bottom gear, C, is not moving. So in this case, let's start by writing the velocity of point P by looking at this top gear, which we know the uh, angular velocity of. So if we're looking at this top gear, point P is on the outside of that gear, a, a radius RB from the shaft. The shaft is fixed, and so we have the expression omega crossed with RB, or in uh, this case, since those two are perpendicular, we get the VP is equal to omega RB, and the direction of that velocity would be out of the page at us, and so that is in the i-hat direction. Now we look at the gear A and write the velocity of the point P from the point of view of that gear. So that gear is rotating around the center fixed point with some omega a, which is what we're trying to find, and if we cross that with the distance from the fixed point to point P, then we can find this velocity VP in terms of omega A, which is the, the total angular velocity of gear A. So omega A has three components, and we don't know any of them. Well, so we can still write this as I hat 
J hat, K hat. And we have omega AX, omega AY, and omega AZ. And that is crossed with R of P with respect to O. So that is this distance right here, P with respect to O. So we go, if we're looking at this, to get to, from P from O, we're going to go H2 in the K hat direction. And we're going to go over RB in the J hat direction, negative. And we do not move in the X direction, so zero. So this, then we can take this cross product and we get that the I hat part is omega AY times H2 minus omega AZ times negative RB. The J hat part is omega AZ times zero, so zero minus omega AX times H2. And the k hat direction is omega ax times negative rb minus zero. So now we can set the left hand side of this equation equal to the expression that we found in the first equation based on gear b. So we have omega rb i hat is equal to this. We can write the i hat part, which gives us omega rb is equal to omega a y h2 minus omega a z. Oh, the negatives cancel times rb. We have the j hat part, which tells us that zero is equal to omega a x h2. I have the k hat part that tells us that zero is equal to omega ax times negative rb. These two together tell us that a omega ax is equal to zero. This expression, however, has two unknowns in it, a, the omega ay and the omega az. So we need another expression. So we need to find another point that we know something about the velocity. Well, point R, we said, was the instantaneous center of zero velocity, so the velocity of point R is equal to zero. Based on looking at gear A, though, rotating around the center O, we can write that VR is also equal to omega A, which we're trying to find, crossed with R, R, O. So I R R O is that vector. Omega A is this unknown vector. So we get then that this is I hat, J hat, K hat. Omega A X we know is zero, but we don't know omega A Y or omega A Z. R R O goes negative h1 in the z direction and negative rc in the j hat direction and no f distance in the x direction. So if we take these cro this cross product, we get an i hat part of omega a y times negative h1 minus omega a z times negative r c. And the j hat part is zero and the k hat part is also zero. So then this gives us another expression which says that zero is equal to omega a y negative omega a y h1 plus omega a z r c. This allows us to write omega a y in terms of omega a z as omega a y is equal to omega a z r c over h1. We take this and plug it into this first equation over here. We can then solve for an expression for omega a z being equal to omega times r b over h1 
divided by H2RC plus H1RB. Plug that back into the omega a y equation. We get the expression RC over H1 times omega RB H1 over H2RC plus H1RB. The H1s cancel, and then these are then are the two components of our final answer for what is omega A. Another type of problem that deals with the general planar motion equations but not rotating coordinate systems are the types of problems that involve collars moving on rods. So in these cases we know information about the velocity of point A and point B because they are moving in the direction of that rod. And from that then we can back out the uh, velocities and angular velocities and accelerations of the rod itself. So we have rod AB. A is moving up the shaft at 8 feet per second and B is moving along the second shaft. We don't uh, aren't given any information about that velocity but we do know it is along that shaft. So first of all let's look at the geometry of this shaft. If we look at the shaft that B is on, it makes a triangle where this side is 4, this side is 3, so this side the hypotenuse must be 5. And at some point, the point we're interested in, point B is halfway up at 2.5, which means that it is 1.5 in along the base and 2 high at that point. All right. So we're given that VA is equal to 8 k hat, going straight up the, the rod that A is on. At the same time, we know that VB must be along this rod, which is the same as this triangle down here. So we know that the direct, that this can be written as in the x direction, we're moving 3 over 5. VB I hat and in the J direction we're moving 4 over 5 VB J hat no that's the K direction K hat and we're not moving in the Y direction for VB so now our general equation of, of planar motion tells us that VB is equal to VA plus omega AB crossed with R of B with respect to A. So VB is 3 fifths VB I hat plus 4 fifths VB K hat. VA is 8 K hat. And then we have our i hat, j hat, k hat for the cross product. Omega AB is what we don't know, so we have omega, we'll just abbreviate it as omega. So omega x, omega y, omega z. And then the RAB, so to go from A to B, we're going in this direction. At this instant, we start at 3, and B is at 2. So in the K direction, we're going to go down 1. We also start at 2 in the Y direction and go to 0. So that's going to be negative 2. And we start at 0 in the X, and we go to... 1.5. So this is plus 1.5. That then is our cross product. If we take this cross product, so just this part, we're going to get i hat is equal to times omega y times negative 1 minus omega z times negative 2 plus j hat, which is omega z times 1.5 minus omega x times negative 1. 
and then we have k hat which is omega x times negative 2 minus omega y times 1.5. So then equating the i hat parts, j hat parts, and k hat parts, we get that the i hat part tells us 3 fifths vb is equal to omega y, negative omega y, plus omega z. The j hat part tells us that four that zero is equal to omega z times one point five minus omega x times negative one, so plus omega x. And the k hat part tells us that four fifths of v b is equal to eight plus negative 2 omega x uh, minus 1.5 omega y. Now this is three equations but four unknowns so we need one more expression and the expression that we're going to use is the fact that omega a b must be perpendicular to the rod. So whatever direction the rod is in at that point Omega AB is going to be perpendicular to that. So Omega AB is perpendicular to RBA, which is the same R that we've been using. So if that's true to write that mathematically, that means that Omega AB dotted with RBA is equal to zero. The dot product, if you remember, is the x parts multiplied together plus the y parts multiplied together plus the z parts multiplied together. So we get omega x times 1.5 plus omega y times two, negative 2 plus omega z times negative 1 is equal to 0. That is our fourth equation. So if we use these three and this as the fourth, we have four equations, four unknowns. We can solve for all of our unknowns. And our calculator can do that for us. And we're going to get omega x is equal to 1.1684. Omega y is equal to 1.2657. Omega z is equal to negative 0 0.7789. And the velocity b is equal to 4.71 as our final answers.